Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, welcome to another session on the podcast. Today, I have with me Mansa, with whom I will be discussing the recent events in the Nigeria public. Welcome to the show, Mansa. Thank you. Thank you very much, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, uh, the pleasure is all mine. So I want you to introduce yourself. Yeah, so my name is Mansa. I am an artist um, born in Niger and raised in Tanzania. I've also lived in Niger um, as well. And yeah, I'm like an African growth trotter. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, move around quite a lot uh, and I make music, of course. And uh, yeah, man, it's, it's an honor to be here, to be a guest on your podcast. All right, thank you. So let's start with you trying to give an overview of the political climate in Niger before this coup. Um, what were the sociocultural, sociopolitical uh, conditions? What were they like before, you know, the incursion of this coup? Um, I would say the perfect definition for it is smoking mirrors. There was a lot of smoking mirrors, you know, there's a lot of things that uh, maybe in the surface seemed really awesome. But when you look um, a little deeper, you see that um, that wasn't the case. Um, so with these guys, what had happened is once they came into power as this political party um, that recently got removed, um, once they came into power, um, there was uh, quite a few changes within the country. First of all, um, I would say that the money financially, the money wasn't circulating as much, right? Like economically. There wasn't that cash flow. It felt like only mostly they had money, the people in that party. And apart and also it felt like they really sold a lot of the country away to other countries, to the Western countries, China, et cetera, et cetera, whether it's obviously the uranium, but there's other things like the it's a like the airport, right? Got sold to a Turkish company. That doesn't really make sense. Yes, so now we have like a more improved airport, but it's not an airport that belongs to Nigerians. Um, it belongs to a Turkish, a private Turkish company. And what they did is that they think, I think they doubled or tripled the airport taxes too, making it harder for us to travel within our own country, you know? And that's what I mean by smoking mirrors. So from the outside, it looks like, okay, this is a nice airport, but on the inside, you realize that that wasn't that's not necessarily a smart move to make. And apart from that, they also um they would arrest quite a lot. There was a lot of tension. There was a lot of tension, and they would arrest quite a lot of people from the opposition for um saying anything, you know, uh, opposing them would get arrested. Um. So yeah, those were those were those were the things that were happening. Uh. Yeah. I hope that gives you an image on. You know. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. All right, so yeah. I've I've read some reports that Nigerians overwhelmingly are in support of this coup. Um, now I don't want to trust those reports necessarily because whenever you have a military junta, they control the media, they control whatever it is that is being published out there, and so I don't necessarily want to trust those reports. Now, but from your own perspective, do you think Nigerians are in support of this coup? From my own perspective, I'll tell you a large amount and a large majority of Nigerians are definitely in support of this coup um, because people were very fed up um, with the way the country was being run prior to this coup and by these guys. And this wasn't the first coup. There were many attempted coups. Um, this was just the first that uh, a lot of people are hoping is successful. Yeah. That's very interesting because... A military coup is not something people would necessarily want to support. But in this case, um, from the report I've heard, and even from just what you said, Nigerians are in support of it. And I think that goes to show the failures of democracy, not just in Nigeria. I think for the most part in Africa, democracy is, is the perception of democracy is dwindling. You know, there are recent reports that suggest that Africans' perception of democracy is waning. And so it's just something interesting to, to see. Now, every time we have a coup in Africa, the military would promise that they want to fix the mess created by the political class. Now, from your perspective, do you think this current military junta has what it takes to fix the mess caused by the political class, or is just going to turn out to be another, 
you know, selfish, self-aggrandizing military coup like we've like we've seen over and over in Africa. From my perspective, all I can tell you is what I hope to see and what I hope not to see, because there's only one way to find out, and that's you know, by waiting and being patient. Um hopefully they do. You know, I hope and I pray that that is what is about to happen. So far, it does seem very promising. So far, it does seem promising. They already have um, announced some of the new ministers um, that they plan on um, governing the country with. And let's say even the prime minister, he's someone who has a good reputation in our country. Um, he doesn't have the reputation for being uh, a corrupt uh, person. So yes. I joined the Twitter spaces a couple of days ago, and someone from Niger said that the prime minister seems to have a clean record. So yeah. I guess I guess you just have to wait, well, wait and see, you know, how how he performs in the coming weeks and days, you know. Mm -hmm. All right, so mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Echo has announced um, the deployment of standby troops a couple of days ago in Niger, and uh, mm -hmm. I kind of see it from both sides. Number one. If Nigerians are in support of this coup, now yeah. in the in the name of democracy, why mm -hmm. does ECOWAS EU want to invade Niger? As long as the people have uh the, as long as the people give the military uh, junta their support, why are we invading them? From that perspective, I understand. And also from the ECOWAS standpoint, I also understand that we need to nip this in its bud to forestall the possibility of military coups spreading in the region. So I sort of see it from both sides. Now, obviously as, a, as, as someone from Niger, you, you're gonna have a strong opinion on this. Now, what do you think about this? Oof, man, let me tell you. I do understand it from a ECOWAS's perspective, but in my own opinion, I think ECOWAS has been ignoring a lot in that region. I don't think this is necessarily ECOWAS who is behind what is happening. I think there's a lot of selfish decisions that are being made. And I 100% believe that they are not taking in consideration what the citizens of Niger actually want. They are not. They don't care about what the citizens of Niger want, because if they did, they would not be um, threatening to make up. Uh, to take military action. Um, that's that's my strong opinion on it yeah. because there has been insecurity in Niger for a little over a decade now. Same as um, Nigeria. You know, everyone, same as Nigeria. Same as, Nigeria, same as Nigeria, same yeah. as Mali, same as um, Burkina Faso. Yeah. You know, there's been insecurity ever since um, what happened in Libya. There's been insecurity in that zone, right? Boko Haram, Al Qaeda, and other terrorist organizations. Why was ECOWAS doing that? Why wasn't ECOWAS taking military action against all of these terrorists? Why did Why didn't they get together and 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 fight Boko Haram in Nigeria? Why? Why is it now that there's a coup that this is happening? And also, some of the leaders in ECOWAS, you know, are in power because they did a coup. Let's be honest. Absolutely. I don't want to say name. Absolutely. I don't want to say name. But some of them are in the position that they're in, making these decisions due to the fact that they were able to do a military coup. So I think it's pretty hypocritical. To... I, I agree with you. You know, yeah. this, this is my own perspective. If you want to forestall the possibility of coups in the West African mm -hmm. bloc, the best way to do it is to show a good model of democracy. And so far, so good. We haven't done that for the most part in Africa. We don't have uh, a democracy we can say we are proud of, let's say with the exception of Botswana. You know, democracy in Africa has failed. It's been an utter failure. It has encouraged institutional corruption. Yeah. It has, it has yeah. Uh, yeah. given wealth. As a weapon. Exactly. It has given wealth to a handful of people. And so that is why the people of Niger can be in support of the military junta, you know, which is very paradoxical right. in itself, you know? And so you sending troops to Niger isn't going to cut it, isn't going to fix the problem. You model right. you model what a democracy should be, and then you see mm -hmm. people supporting democracy. 
you know so i think that's a fundamental problem i have with with invasion 100 and not only that it's like Equos was create wasn't created for this Equos was created for us you know for our our region for the citizens for our countries to trade to protect each other it wasn't created for us to go to war with each other especially if it's something that citizens are in support of clearly when the junta decides to do a march in the stadium 30,000 people fill up the stadium that's very rare for 30,000 people to fill up that stadium by the way it doesn't happen often but it shows you the strength in popularity that they currently have in the country and it's not just in the capital people have been marching to show their support in all around the country in all the cities in Agadez, Zander, all the different cities they've been showing their support in masses and western media has not been posting that you know they haven't been showing all of that um so yeah i think that's that's important yeah yeah the recent coups that have taken place in the west african bloc um all took place in french speaking african countries burkina faso chad mm -hmm. mali and of course niger now now mm -hmm. can you sp speak to that especially in the context of french imperialism you know now naturally i like to blame africa for africa's own problems but really if you look at the influence France still has on its former colonies in Africa, you can't help but shiver, and you can't help but but one you can't help but agree with the general anti-French sentiment going on in this country. So, could you speak to me about French imperialism in Africa? It's terrible. Um, I stopped celebrating our independence because I don't think it's a a real independence. To be honest with you, um, we're still. Our money is still being printed printed in France. Our currency is still pegged by to the euros, meaning, and we're still paying taxes, post colonial taxes, yeah. to them. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't sound like independence. That doesn't sound like freedom. They're still taking the resources from our country um, at very, very, very low prices. You know, um, prices that so far we haven't been able to control. Um, before there was a coup in there was a coup in Niger in 2010. There was a president named uh, Tansha, Baba Tansha. Um, he tried to change the prices of the uranium that uh, the French is buying. By the, at that time, the company was called Arriva, the French company that um, has been mining the uranium over there in Niger. They did a coup on him, backed by the French, of course, even though you know. They don't claim it. They're not going to claim it. It's very much public knowledge in Niger that this coup was backed by the French. They removed him from there because he wanted to change the prices. He was saying, listen, it's either you guys pay our uranium for these prices or we go find other people who can, who can, who can purchase um, our uranium. That didn't happen. So it shows you the power that they have to be able to scheme politically um, in our country, financially. Yes. And... Yeah, it's 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 just terrible. And even apart from that, something I haven't seen people talk about a lot. Because you know, a lot of what's going on, and a lot, a large re one of the main reasons people have the French especially have not been accepting this coup and are doing everything they can to stop it and free Bazoon is because of uranium. Yeah, they depend on the uranium in our country. Uh, a third of their of their electricity. Is generated by the uranium that is mined from the share and people don't talk about the consequences the mining has apart from the most obvious there has been a lot of diseases from the radioactivity that um is in that area yeah. you know a lot of diseases have been going on where the nigerians have have been suffering because of that um not all the precautions are being taken that's also very very important because you know it's the west who always talks about um hu whether it's like human rights you know like and all of that type of stuff um this is obviously abuse of that um yeah i think i think that's also very important to note down i think that's something that people should know about um because many people don't 
Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I also understand that there are two types of cephas being spent in Africa, the Central yeah. African cepha and the West African cepha. And yeah. you can't even spend uh, one in the other region. Let's say you're from Central Africa. You can't spend that currency in, in a West African a francophone west african yeah. country that that doesn't make sense and i also understand and that yeah i also understand that up to 80 percent or so of uh the foreign reserves of former french colonies uh have been stored in france like what is the meaning of that mm -hmm. like honestly what's the meaning of that mm -hmm. and like and like you pointed out you cited an example i understand also that france has been involved in the assassinations of many african leaders you know, over the years and so and then you wonder why why these countries are revolting against against France, you know. But that leads me to the next question, though. That leads me to the yeah. next question. Uh, have you seen the the recent pictures of the president of Burkina Faso meeting with Putin? Yeah. So it seems there's a, there's a growing alliance now in that region um, of them trying to you know side with Putin or Russia. Now, from your point of view, do you think uh, do you think that's the right thing to do? Do you think someone like Putin could have the best interest for Africa? I don't think any of them have the best interest for Africa in mind. Um, only Africa should have the best, and they don't need to have the best interest of Africa in mind, you know? Um, they don't. Like uh, a Nigerian president or a Nigerian president shouldn't have the best interest of France in mind. They should have the best interest of their own countries. Um, so that's important to... To, to make very clear. Uh, apart from that, it's a very, it's a, it's a pretty complicated and uh, tricky one with that one. But there is this one thing where people are like, okay, let the Russians save us type vibes. You know what I mean? The, yeah. Which is what like has been happening. And I'm against that, that. I think it's up to us to save us. It's not up to Putin to save us. It's not up to France to save us. It's not up to America to save us. No, it's up to us to save us. It's up to Africa to unite, to work with each other and move forward together. Now, apart from that, partners, every country has partners, whether it's for trading, whether it's for military services, whether it's for, you know, uh, many, many different aspects, but every country has partners. Um, Pretty much almost since our independence, the problem has been that we did have other options, which we didn't have other options, you know? We didn't have, um, it was it was mostly like the West and NATO countries and France, especially. Um, and that is one of the reasons why they were able to have such an influence in our country and manipulate our country the way they want to. But now, there are other options for other things. And it's not just Russia, there's also China, you know? Yeah. Um, which gives us more leverage. It gives Africa, it gives Niger more leverage uh, to be able to say, okay, friends, y'all are not our only option now. We're really done with you. These guys can work with us now. And that's what's happening. And I think that's okay. That's all right. Because when you look down through history, you can see the actions that Russia the, the relationship Russia has had with African nations is very, very different from the relationship France has had with African nations. Um, that's what I would say. Uh, it's, 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 it's very different. Russia, Russia has definitely been more for the independence, whereas France has been more for the dependence. Russia has seen us more as, this. it's a respect thing, to be honest. It's very much a respect thing. Um, I think since France had colonized us, they never necessarily looked at us as equals. And I don't think they ever will, or nor will they ever want to. Um, whereas with Russia, it seems like they can look at us as equals. Well, from my standpoint, um, it doesn't make sense that you are trying to trade one dictator for another dictator, you know? So this trying this causing up to Putin doesn't cut it for me, but I will agree with you that Africa should have Africa's back. We need to form a formidable alliance as a continent. You know, I think the African Union should mean something for once in its life. You know, the ECOWAS should mean something for once in its life. 
you know, we need to form formidable alliances amongst ourselves. We need to trade amongst ourselves. You know, that's the only that's the only uh that's the only guarantee we have. You know, and of course no, we no. that doesn't preclude us from trading with the West or the East. But the thing is, we've got to do it smart. <laughs> and I'm afraid that African leaders don't know how to negotiate. You know, uh, they don't know how to negotiate, at least for for deals in the best interest of their own people african leaders are they don't know how to do that you know look at the recent chinese influence even in africa look at how china is is exploiting our resources in africa and our, our leaders don't do anything about that and so if we ally with if this country is allied with, with putin how is that going to be any different from what is happening with china or what has happened with france you know so well, you can't even to be honest i don't think you can consider what china and france are doing even close uh, to be honest, um, because once we got par partners like China, you go outside and you can see the difference, especially infrastructure wise. You know what I mean? I'm not saying it's perfect by any means, by the way, but you see there are new bridges being built. There's new buildings being built. There's new, you know what I mean? Like infrastructure wise. That's at least we can see the results of the partnership. We can see, okay, so we gave these guys this much and they actually delivered and gave us this. Whereas with France, it's just take, 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 take. There's no reciprocity um, from their side. So yeah, I, I can't put those together. You and have a point. I definitely do, yeah, and I definitely do believe that with Russia, it will be more similar to the way it is with China. You have a point. With America. Uh, China's relationship with Africa has been bittersweet at best, bittersweet. You can see that some advantages in that uh, in terms of loans. China has given Africa some low interest loans over the years. And like you said, in terms of infrastructure, we can see uh, some benefits in that mm -hmm. regard. But also you need to understand that I'll give you a very good example now. The mining sector in DR Congo is literally controlled by the Chinese. Like all the supply chain, you know, it's literally mm -hmm. controlled by Chinese and, you know, DR Congo is is in a mess right now, bro. You know, all because of that. So that's what I'm saying that African leaders don't know how to, you know, negotiate deals in the best interest of their own people. So it doesn't matter who, who you're trading with. You have to have your people's interest at heart as a leader, you know. So exactly. Exactly. that's what I'm we just we simply need better leaders. And it's and it's literally what I was saying. It's not up to China to have Africa's best interest at heart. You know, it's not up to America to have Africa's best. We're not looking at friends like, oh, you need to have our best interests at heart. No, it's our leaders who have to do that. It's our leaders who have to stop being selfish and actually want to put us first, to put the country first, to see the growth and the development of the country. It starts there. And from there, that's when things can grow and that's where beautiful things can happen. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So what are your hopes, you know, for Niger in the coming months and years you know even in the event that this um invasion doesn't escalate to a full-blown war what are your hopes for niger republic my hopes for niger first of all is independence um i want us to be independent and fully done with this whole neocolonialism that has been happening with france i want us to truly 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 well, okay, you know what? My very first one is peace. I want peace. <laughs> That's the priority. I want peace. Um, now, after that, of course, independence. I want good leaders. I want good leaders in this country. That way we can actually start to develop and actually rip the fruits of our labor, you know? Uh, for the longest time, it seems like everyone is benefiting from Niger. You know, Niger is a very local country. Most people, most people, most people use, when I say tell people I'm from Nigeria, they look, ah, Nigeria. They don't know where Nigeria is, you know? They don't know where Nigeria is. Most people don't know where Nigeria is. But it's with this thing that's happening where people are truly realizing the importance of Nigeria and the role the Nigeria plays in the world. You understand what I'm saying? It's it's with all of this, with this coup and the way that the West and everyone else is reacting and everyone else is panicking, France is panicking, America is sending people to try to negotiate. Everyone is wondering, yo, now people are actually seeing how everyone is exploiting, benefiting from Niger. 
it's time for Nigerians to also enjoy what our country has to offer. It's time for us to not look at Nigeria for our electricity as we supply friends for the uranium for their electricity. Those are things that simply don't make sense. My whole life I've been wondering why? <laughs> why are we buying electricity from Nigeria when it's our uranium that supplies one of the world's largest powers, electricity? And now you can see with this sanction, Nigeria has cut our electricity. That's the importance of independence right there. So independence and value, bring more value towards our country and enjoy what our country really has to offer. That's what I would say. And I want to see a Pan-African, I have a Pan-African dream. I want to see a world where we trade with other Africans. I want to see a world where we can travel into any other African country without needing even our passports or visas. Um, yeah, yeah. And just financially and economically, there needs to be a growth because Niger is poor. The people in Niger are poor, you know? Um, there are certain people, and those who are rich are very rich. There needs to be a middle class, a large, yeah. large, large middle class. That's very important for just the productivity of a nation, that middle class right there. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I would say. You know, if I could add anything to what you said, I would say that this coup is a cautionary tale for you know, the consequences of the failures of leadership. Uh, 100%. Africans are largely, largely disaffected by the political class, largely. And that has manifested in itself in various forms. In Nigeria, we've, we had the NSAS protest. You know, uh, in the past, in the recent elections, we had, uh, we had the obedience movement, whether you agree with their tactics or not. But I say that as a consequence of the failures of leadership and invading another country, especially when they are in support of the government they have, you know, it doesn't make any sense. You know, the best you can do is to model a better version of that. Model it. If you think a uh, military junta is, is, is wrong, then how about you? Even the Tinubu wants to invade ECOWAS. His own people don't like him. You know, they don't like yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I yeah, anyone we, from the squad <laughs> So the point is, Africans are disaffected with the political class and it's taking different forms. The consequences of that are taking different, different forms in forms of protests and from in forms of coup and what have you. And so I I wish nothing but the best for the people of Niger and for Africa at large. You know, so thanks for Thank thanks for the chat today. Uh if people want to yeah. get in touch with you, how do they do that? Uh they can follow me um on Instagram, mansa.nova, M-A-N-S-A dot N O V A. Um, on Twitter, Mansa underscore Nova. So M A N S A underscore N O V A. Uh, yeah, those are those are my two social medias. And just before we wrap up, I want to say um, I'm first of all, I want to say one thing. I've never been more proud to be from Niger <laughs> as I am right now. By the way, seeing how not just the military but also the citizens, everyone is unifying, and not just the citizens of Niger but Africa. You know. Look, the, you're you're from Nigeria and you want to talk to me about this. It's our neighboring countries. It's all it's the diaspora. All lies are on us right now, and it's because there is a revolution happening. And I think that's very beautiful. I think that's very very beautiful. And obviously, sometimes you have to go through um through tough times to see the end of the rainbow. You know, like the other side of it. So, yeah, man, just praying and wishing for the best for real. I mean, the pleasure is all my bro. Yeah. Thanks for talking to me today. Yeah. Appreciate you're, it, you're a musician, right? So I suppose you yeah. have a Spotify account or a YouTube channel or something. Right, right, right. right, right. Yeah, no, YouTube, check, check out my YouTube, MVNSA. MVNSA. Same as my Spotify, MVNSA. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll drop all the links in the description. All right. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. Bye. Right. See you, my guy.